We have beautiful singers in our group. We have care receivers and caregivers, and it just balances everything perfectly. But you don't have to be an excellent singer to be in the group. Um, a good warm-up song today. Let's do um, tab four, Amazing Grace. Yeah. Happy, happy. Mm -hmm. and yeah. lifts I the love to sing. Love to sing. I love the director. She is such a nice gal, that yeah. jam. Yeah. She's so nice. And I think the community sees this group yeah. and and uh, is yeah. encouraged by it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, I, you know, you we don't all know have gray what. Hair. <laughs> Or white. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or white. <laughs> yeah. If we have hair. Yeah, if there's hair at all. Yeah. <laughs> My name is Jan Larrell. I am currently the senior advocate here in Granite Falls. I also, uh, which also includes Yellow Medicine County. I also work with the Building Bridges Memory Choir. The Building Bridges Choir is actually part of a program called Act on Alzheimer's that was started here in Granite Falls, I believe in 2016, by the Living at Home Block Nurse Program. Act on Alzheimer's is a statewide network that helps communities improve Alzheimer's-related care, support caregivers, and decrease stigma around Alzheimer's. The Building Bridges Memory Choir is for people living with various forms and various stages of dementia and their care partners. The choir meets every Thursday morning at St. Paul's Church. Dementia is a, think of it as a large umbrella, and underneath that umbrella there are different memory issues. Alzheimer's is the one that maybe is most familiar. They're all kind of related with memory and communication. In 2016, Granite Falls was designated a dementia-friendly community through the Act on Alzheimer's initiative. The Living at Home Block Nurse Program identified three focus areas, dementia-related community education, caregiver support groups, and using the arts to provide meaningful social interaction. In a dementia-friendly community, my view is that uh, people in a community are aware of people who may be experiencing this and are more sympathetic, are able to help them in a situation where uh, maybe they're having trouble communicating with what they want or need. But we want people to realize that people with, uh, that have these conditions that are dealing with this is that they can do anything anyone else can do. They just want to be included. They want to be part of the communities. John Linden and his wife Diane Linden sing in the choir. John is a retired pharmacist and Diane is retired from teaching special education. Well, uh, Diane and I are not singers. So, well, you, so, so coming... He didn't to have to mention that. <laughs> no, coming, coming, coming to, coming to this, really uh, we had to spread our wings. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of the people that are coming to help, you know, to be with with maybe one of their friends or their caregiver, maybe they haven't been in choirs either. So it's been a, a building thing. Do you consider yourself singers now? Yes. Yeah. Oh, of course. sure. Oh, yeah. oh, sure. Of course. We can do it. <laughs> yes. We can do it. The Lindens also work behind the scenes to make rehearsals run smoothly. Diane sets aside a couple hours every Wednesday afternoon to make individual phone calls to choir members. Hello, Bob. 
How are you? First of all, you find out what their week has been, mm -hmm. and you discuss that. Mm -hmm. And if they're coming the next day, and if they need an extra ride or whatever, whatever. And so that takes about two and a half hours. What about Helen? How has Helen been? Because if I don't call, if they're like I missed a couple one, one week. Mm -hmm. Actually, I think I was tired. <laughs> And they said, you didn't call me. <laughs> when we come here in the morning, we usually get here about eight or 15 minutes to eight, and then I, I got to get the coffee going right away. That's the most, <laughs> that's one of the most important things. And they come trickling in about 20 to nine. And by the time nine, 10 arrives, we've got chitter chatter all over the room because they're just enjoying the fellowship of each other and being together. And we've really become, I would say, a family. They come earlier every time so that they can sit and visit because they don't see some of them yeah. for the yeah. rest of the you know, week until the next week again. So right. then they come early to visit. This socialization of being able to sit down with people and visit across the table is huge, and they enjoy it so much. So why don't we warm up? You can uh, stand or sit. It's up to you. So let's, oh yeah, we just, I feel out of place today. <laughs> yeah, I'm usually back a little farther. It's, I don't even know where I'm going. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I worked as an elementary music teacher for 33 years. And I loved that, the age group K through six. You know, when, when I was teaching and we did actions, I always told the kids to mirror me so that they would not get into each other's space. We just did a lot of echoing back and forth, whether it was learning the tune or melody to a song or rhythms, I, that, that was just part of my natural training. So like if I went this way, everybody went that way, even though it's, uh, you know, so I never went left, right, because that was just no way, okay? So if that helps you not to bump somebody, you can do that. <laughs> when I was asked to do, uh, be the director of the Br Building Bridges Choir, I thought, well, okay, I have that background, but I also attended uh, the Giving Voice Initiative. The Giving Voice Initiative is based in Bloomington, Minnesota. It was started in 2014 as a way to create well-being for people living with dementia and their care partners and to reduce the stigma around what it means to live with dementia. Eileen Broughton is the executive director. For some reason, you know, the, the areas of the brain where music memory was held was being impacted last um, when people were living with Alzheimer's. It wasn't just coming together to make music, it was the way the music itself was the vehicle for joy and empowerment and healing. And when these people got together, they felt like they belonged. The Giving Voice Chorus participated in a health partners study looking at people living with dementia and their care partners. The study was conducted in two phases. The first looked at the effects of four and eight months of choir participation, and the second examined the effects of one rehearsal. Phase one preliminary results showed an improvement in feelings of depression by 50% in care partners and 30% in people living with dementia who were tested. And people in phase two self-reported improvement in overall mood states. So not only did you see a significant elevation in mood or just, you know, self-assessed, do you feel like you are capable of doing X, Y, and Z? It was significant. But this was a very small study involving about 20 people in phase one and 25 in phase two. So, you know, we're, we're doing everything we can to continue research because there just isn't enough out there. Because we can tell you that their mood is improved or their cognition is improved, um, but we want, we want brain stats. We had a really cool opportunity to perform at the Ordway in 2018. And that's a big venue. Yeah. And that's a lot of, you know, kind of pressure on any performer to be under the big lights in a big venue. And we had 
a duet, which were actually just two good friends that were singing with us. And the man was living with Alzheimer's and his friend, she was just singing with him as a volunteer to be his partner. And before the concert, she, she didn't voice this to us, but she was really apprehensive because she kind of felt like, why are you putting him through this? Like, I understand you want us to sing at rehearsal and it's great and it's full of joy. And, um, you know, I'm so glad I get to go with him every week because we have so much fun. But why do you need to put him through this performance because he's gonna be on stage and it's gonna be uncomfortable. And we didn't know this at the time, she wrote us a letter afterwards. And um, she said when they got on stage and she saw his face light up when he saw his family in the audience, that it totally clicked why we do this. Because that is a gift that he can give his family, who probably takes care of him all the time, that he never gives to give back. Mm -hmm. And he was up on that stage singing his heart out to his family. And people with Alzheimer's don't get asked to do that anymore. They, they're always, needing the care and needing the help. And so she said, oh my gosh, for me it totally clicked. Of course we have to do this mm -hmm. because it's so important. When these people are singing, you can't tell who has Alzheimer's and who doesn't. Mm -hmm. As an organization, we wanted to create a replication process that would be a, a worldwide movement. And so we worked really hard to produce this, this toolkit, sort of a step-by-step -step guide in, in how you could create your own chorus. I like to choose music that I think is familiar, mm -hmm. that that's part of this concept. If there is a tricky rhythm or a melody or something, that's where this echo clapping that you saw us do comes in handy because when you repeat it physically, you have a better chance of remembering you it. Please clap on any word that starts with a B. Good. Good morning, everyone. John's going to come and talk to you. Uh, Diane couldn't come today, so uh, so we just were. I thought he'll give you a little update, okay? And then we'll go from there. Thank you. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, Diane had all plans on coming today, but last night. Uh, She's been struggling with, uh, with a fluid problem and uh, with some blisters and uh, different things on her feet. And so she's not getting around very well. And she just wanted you to know that she's thinking about all of you and how much she loved being here and knowing and being a part of this. And all your cards, letters, and... Uh, especially your prayers, are so welcomed. And she just wanted me to say thanks, and she loves you all. It started out uh, in December when I was diagnosed with cancer for the fourth time, by the way. I hope that gives people encouragement. But I think tomorrow I'm going to go and visit the choir for the first time in all those months. And I'm coming back differently than when I left. When I left, I was this bubbly, kind of wild, 80-year-old. <laughs> and now I'm going back <laughs> a little bit different. And I think that's one of the reasons why it's taken me a while too. But that's one of the things that bothered me 
and it's not going to bother me anymore. Hi. Hello. Hello. Good to see you. Hi, John. Hello. Hi, John. Are you going to... Do you want to say something to them? Yeah. Why don't you come a little closer? Oh, my God. Oh, yes. <laughs> For someone who does not like this part of things, I can't imagine I'm here, but I'm so thankful that I am. Anyway, I guess because we haven't seen each other for about nine months, or how long has it been? Since January? <coughs> yeah. Well, we didn't yeah. see in January. Yeah. So it's been a long time. Yes. And it's been one thing after another. <laughs> but you know what? The one thing I knew for sure was that all of you were praying for me. And I appreciate that so much. But I just wanted to know that I don't think I would have made it without your prayers. And I mean that sincerely. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. And gee, by the fall when we start again, we're going to have lots of fun. We cannot express, we give, um, and we share, but what we give, get back is astronomical.